Yeah, I, I love the morning class. It's a very different kind of energy. All right, so let's start with some hip circles. Beginning with the not quite what I wanted. There we go. So starting with the tape side hip, working on external rotation. Again, those first two circles, don't worry about the postural elements, just try to get that hip to travel in a complete arc. Forward, around, back, and in. Forward, around, back, and in. Once that circle starts to feel smooth, add in foot grab. And just kind of see what grabbing the grabbing feet does in terms of the shape um, and size of that circle. I usually find that it reduces the amplitude a little bit. It makes it a little more challenging to make the circle evenly round. So often when I'm just starting out, I'll go from no foot grab for a nice big circle to bringing that foot grab in, making sure I maintain circle. I go back and forth a few times. Once the circle's nice and even, then I add in the belly draw with the foot grab. And that umbilical draw to the spine helps the power to traverse the middle and makes it accessible to the shoulders and arms. And then lastly on that brief list is the raising of the head neck at the occiput. And notice how my little finger side is up. I'm very gently cradling my head and it's giving it ever so much traction so I can feel that elongation of my cervical spine. And that little bit of lift means that I'm not getting hunched and capturing all that force in my, my chest. It gives all that movement kind of place to freely go and express. And with those ideas in mind, let's go on to the non-tape side leg. Again, external rotation. Find your shape first. And then start playing in your own time with the foot grab, belly draw, and that gentle head neck lift. Now from here, that hip's gonna come around, forward, and as it goes back, it's gonna connect into the other leg. Draws back, and now we're playing with those slow figure eights. Just as with that single circle, the first goal here is to ascribe a figure eight. So take your time, work on that roll to draw, roll to draw. Pulling each hip around. Then as you're ready, adding in foot grab, foot grab yeah, belly draw, and head and neck raise. And keep working with that for a moment. I'll right, take a look at everyone. And tape side once again, big circles. Around and in. First revolutions, making sure the circle is even. Then adding in foot grab, belly draw, and that head neck. Making sure the circle comes in, then comes back around in, around to back. Okay, transitioning to that other leg. Again, first few circles, just making sure that shape is there, that you can feel that complete arcing of your base. Go 
So that's comfy adding in foot grab, belly draw, and that very gentle suspension towards the floor ceiling. Okay, now linking the first hip into the second, drawing internal figure eights. Again, first few movements, make sure you're really ascribing each of the spheres of that figure eight. One hip draws into the next. The shape shouldn't feel broken. Um, it shouldn't feel like it's any part of the clucks to get clumps together. It should be one continuous smooth roll, hip to hip. Your knees should never lock out. You always want just a little bit of extra give in your joints. Rounding side to side. Continue playing with that for a moment. Good job, Galen and Kara. The movement's looking a lot more smooth these last couple classes. Mobility is definitely increasing. That's great. Good job, Rachel. The belly draw is important. Also pay attention to how the hips rise and fall as you roll in. Good. Looking good, Karen. I can't see your feet. Just make sure that your feet are in parallel. Okay? And make sure that, awesome, awesome. There's a little bit of foot grab, but the hip movement's looking awesome. All right, everyone. Shake that out for just a moment. Y'all making some really good progress with this. The takeaway from hip rotation today that we're going to play with is slicing. And we're going to do slicing with a bit of stepping before we go into our stance and single legs. Before we get into the hands and the hips, let's play with just the hands for a moment. Notice how there's a concaving of my chest. The arms aren't going way to the side like this. All that movement is happening in front of my axial line, in front of this line right here. So I lift up. I always have my shoulders in the most powerful range. I'm never sacrificing the range and the structure of the joint for my movement. Everything lifts. Little finger side turns in. The hand slice to 45 degree. Everything lifts. Little finger side turns in. Slicing little finger side. Ascribing now a vertical figure eight to go on top of our horizontal figure eight in our base. Throughout this whole movement, my arms never completely collapse into my side. There's always a little bit of space in that arm. I, again, just like, I, just like how we never have locked out knees, I never want my arms pressing against my body because once I'm here, I have to move before I can move. So long as there's space, I can, I can maintain one continuous smooth movement. Play with that for a moment. Make sure that your hands are following each other, Elizabeth. Make sure one hand leads the other. The low hand pulls the high hand around. There you go. Make sure the bend in the elbow is equal between both hands, Elizabeth. Good. Good, and a little more weight in the arms and shoulders. And so as you lift, you're lifting the whole structure of your arms. Yeah, that's it. It's not just the hands doing this, it's the whole body lifting and dropping. It's like we're raising a really heavy object to throw it down, lifting to drop, lifting to drop. Good. Very nice, April and Caro and Chris and Karen, you're all doing a great job with this. Karen, add a little more round to the arms. Drawing, following that circle as you lift. Draw, circle to lift. Draw, round to lift. Very nice, very nice.
Good, Galen and Kira, you're both following your hands really well. There's good space in the armpit, good rounding of the chest, and great hip movement beneath it. You're both doing fantastically. Very nice, Rachel. Okay, so next one, we have the arm movement. We have the base. Let's begin to put it together. So start with the hands on the hips, going into internal rotation for a few seconds. What I want you to pay attention to here after the shape becomes familiar again, is where does the hip naturally like to rise? You go to take side, as I roll back, the hip is low. As it comes around, there's a lift before it draws in. And now for non tape side, it's low and lifts. Low to lift, low to lift. Feel that movement for a second. This is a function of the hips being a ball and socket joint. You can't just move in a plane side to side. There has to be an allowance for that spherical shape of the structure. All right, and we're going to utilize that lift as we bring our arms into play here. So as tape side comes forward, it's gonna roll in, around, and now as you go to that lifting part, the hip's gonna lift just a little bit first, and the arms are gonna fall, are gonna follow. As I continue around, they slice. Now going into non-tape side hip, as that hip lifts, the arms follow. As the tape side hip, hip drops, the arms slice. Roll to lift, roll to drop. Hips first, then hands. Hips first, then hands. Play with this nice and slow for a few moments. Really try to identify how that roll of the hip begins to lift the arms. If this is just making no sense to you, start playing with those three postural elements again. The grabbing the ground of the toes, the drawing the belly of the spine, and the raising of the head and neck. Of these three, the belly draw is, I think, the biggest help in feeling this exercise. Is as the belly draws in, that power from the hips can travel up the body and reach the shoulders. What we're trying to do is use that same pulse that we use in the rotating of the hips to now power the shoulders. We just added a couple more gears onto the same system. We're moving at a delay, hips first, then hands, because if we move at the same time, there'd be no cascade and um, and acceleration of power, right? We don't want all the power to come at once, we want everything to build and build like a snowball rolling down a hill, it then crashes into the target. As you get more comfortable and your moves become more even, you can start speeding things up a little. If you lose your balance, your structure, slow down first, if that's not enough, go back to your very basic movements and start building up again from there. Notice how I'm not throwing my arms down, it's just the weight of the arms given a vector by the roll of the hips. My shoulders are relaxed, my upper arms are relaxed, all the speed and power is just rolling up from my base. Continue playing with that. Very nice, Rachel, heavy shoulders. Same for you, Elizabeth. Make sure you're raising enough so the arms are heavy as they drop. You have that 50 pound bag of kittens? Just drop the kittens. Kittens have a rough time in our class. There you go. Nice job, Galen. Make sure the hands are following each other, okay? Even pacing. The low hand pulls the high hand. It's like there's a string attaching them, drawing them evenly side to side. Very nice, April. Now start using that belly draw so you can increase your speed a little bit and relax your sternum as you move through. Good job, Caro. Very nice, Chris. Okay, and shake it out for a moment. We're gonna add just one more element here. We're gonna add in a step. So watch me first. From my slicing, the hands raise up, my foot comes behind, I bring my weight to that stepping foot, the far foot pivots in, and as it does, comes to the ground flat, I pull my weight on that foot and slice. I go back the other way, as I lift, 
my body turns, I step, I follow that turn, as this foot turns all the way in, my weight travels to it, and I can slice. We're gonna go back and forth like that, nice and slow, just a couple of times to begin with, okay? So from here, the arms raise as I turn. I step behind, pivoting, the far foot turns, my weight pulls that far foot, and I continue to slice. Going back the other way, as the arms raise, the body turns in, the hip internally rotates. That internal rotation gives me space to step behind. I follow that internal rotation around, carrying it in the foot that's about to touch the ground, and that way my base isn't sacrificed as I move. Again, lift, internally rotate. Step, internally rotate, slice. Going back the other way, lift, pivot. Step, internally pivot. As I pull this foot around, my weight drills into it, propelling the arm through. So two more with this arm. Lift, internally rotate. Step, continue the movement, slice. And going back once again, lift, internally rotate, step behind, drawing around, slice. Now I have room. As I lift, I internally rotate. Other arm this time. Step behind, turning. As I drill into that last foot, the hands continue. Going back the other way, lift, Rotate in, step, turn, as this foot draws across, continue that slice. Let's do two more of these. Lift, step, turn, continue. Last one for all this together. Lift, rotate in, step, turn, Continue that slice. All right, everyone continue that in your own time. Let me give you all some help. If you're completely lost, I recommend slowing down and try to feel that lift in the hips, feel the draw to the other leg. And as that last foot rotates and turns in, filling that foot before you slice down so you can get out of your own way. There you go, Rachel. Make sure both hands raise as you round each hip. One hand is higher than the other, but it's that pulse drawing from the belly that raises both those hands up. And so there's that vertical roll along with that figure eight roll. There you go. Because the major challenge here is how do you connect the upper to the lower, right? How do you make that whole body move as one accelerating unit? Good. And the abs have to be in some way involved. That was looking very nice. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's shake that out for just a moment. Any question for me, questions for me on this exercise, um, the hip base, any of that good stuff? I have a question. How far behind your body are your arms going back in that? Great question. Is side view good? So see how there's a rounding of my chest. I'm carrying that sphere to the side as the hand raises, it's not beyond that axial line. It just looks that way, that whole body's twisting, okay? So I'm never going back here with my arms, I'm turning my body side to side. And so if I weren't turning my body at all, it would look like this, right? Not nearly as, you know, impressive in amplitude, but because I get that movement from the hips, I can draw that power from my base, carry that spear up, and then drop that spear, carry that spear and drop. And so it can be a relaxed slicing movement. It can also have that more folly, more power generating approach to it as well. But I only can have that if my arms maintain that round. As soon as I go back here, I lose all that connectedness to the front of my body. Now I'm only as my deltoid, which isn't nearly as powerful as all my other structures together. 
Does that help? Yeah, so it sounds like um, when we're doing the warm up where we're just doing the arms, like really focusing on that integrity and that position, and then exactly. it's gonna feel the same. It's gonna feel the same, it's just gonna look as if our arms are sloppier. Right, it, it's Legos. You know, each piece kind of fits together and films a bigger and bigger and more impressive dinosaur. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yes, Chris. Oh, um, this might be a bit redundant, but I, like, I'm guessing that the mechanics are almost identical to circle walking. I mean, like, slight yang in the back, but that kind of cavity in the chest is like drawing the um, pull of the yao all the way into the center, the center in that uh, your muscles are, are kind of banding from the back like a drum. So that's right. doing that. It's, it's, it, it's, it's an analog, it absolutely is. And because circle walking is gonna be the focus of the class in about 15 minutes here, I wanted to make sure that we all had kind of, you know, a setup with a more familiar exercise that involves some basic stepping. And then when we get into circle walking, we'll start to draw those parallels. That's a very good point, yeah. Okay. Yeah, base structures are base structures. You know, if they're there, it's going to be good. Um, if your Jeep and Gong is good, it will fit into any style. If your Jeep and Gong is not good, it's always going to be a struggle, which is why I focus so much on these basic exercises. Any other questions? Okay, let me get a quick sip of water, and we'll do some stance and single leg, and then some circle walking. So, starting with take side hip, that foot is going to be flat on the ground. The other foot is going to be right in the middle of the flat foot with the very tip of the toe touching the ground. Out of the space, the flat foot sided arm is going to coil and drill up. The toe side arm is going to coil and drill down. As they both corkscrew, there's going to be a slight rounding and knitting of those clavicles in the front of the chest. The belly is going to draw out of the spine just a bit. Head and neck raised, and there's enough space in the armpit. I can get my finger in there without being stuck, okay? So again, I always want a little bit of space in my joints, even as I'm lifting and drawing. The focus here is that drilling upwards and drilling downwards, and using that as kind of a lever to open up those paraspinal muscles and give more space in the back all the way to the pelvis. So I'm focusing on opening from the base of my neck all the way down to the very bottom of my spine. From here, the toe foot steps through. The other foot steps through, both legs are straight as the arms cross. The low hand comes underneath the foot, the palm facing towards the ground. The high hand is right above the mid-men, right over the middle of that low back, pressing away with the palm. The raising low hand is putting some slight pressure on the foot, helping to open up my hamstring. If I want more of a stretch, I can raise my neck up a little. If the stretch is too much, I can bring my fingers together like this, both hands on top of each other, and gently draw down as far as is comfortable, and then just let my body hang to open up the rest. From here, we lift. The weight pours onto the front foot. Draw the umbilicus towards the spine. As I raise the other leg, the foot is parallel to the ground. The knee is actively raising to engage my psoas as the arms unfold and hold. Just as in the first posture, the clavicles are knitting to the slight concavity of the chest. My back is straight, drawing all the way down to my heel. Actively raising that leg. Continue to hold. A little more stretch in the elbows, Rachel. Everything else is looking good. There I am. From here, the raised foot comes over the knee, though not touching it and the hands fold like you're wrapping around a post and the hands are holding a pane of glass. Still space in that armpit. My hand isn't collapsing against my side. I'm carrying that round from my chest 
and drawing it through, still actively raising that high leg. Next up, the raised leg crosses the standing leg, making a figure four, drawing the belly to the spine. As I sink down, I wanna make sure that I'm maintaining that umbilical draw to my back. So my pelvis isn't posterior rotating. It doesn't have posterior rotation, okay? So I drop straight down, so I can feel those quadriceps engage. I can drop down as far as my leg feels stable. If I need to shake it out any time, I can definitely do that too. There's no problem taking a break from this um, sequence if you need to. It's challenging. Grabbing the ground with the, with the down foot can really help to increase your, stable, your stability. Raising up. The leg now comes behind, right in the boss of the knee. Same thing, as soon as I sink, the hands push away from the body as I hold. Continue holding. Very nice, Rachel. From here, the leg and the hands draw up. I wanna get the shoulders behind my hips as I elongate those three limbs, opening the spine as I stretch, not collapsing it. And then I wanna use the weight of those hands behind my body to draw me back and raise the leg that's lifting. Hips are even as I press forward and back. Good, if you start losing your balance, it's totally okay to draw back into that base and push back out again. The stance takes time. And it's also entirely okay to stumble and fall with this when it's tricksy. But again, as you get behind the shoulders, really let that weight of the arms help you to draw up to that middle and get that leg up a little higher, okay? Drawing back in, hips are even, rotating forward, pressing out with the palms and away with the foot. Toes pointing to the ground, fingers pointing to the ceiling, straight line if you can between the hands and that foot through the back. Back's engaged, I'm not bringing my hip up here. Everything is flat like a table as I push away. And hold. Good. Act Drawing in and down. Shake it out. Take a few steps. We'll do the other side in just a minute here. Does anyone have any questions? Will we pause between sides? Yes, Chris, it is Fighting Toad. Thank you. Would not be the same without you. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the B side. So, same thing. Non tape side is flat on the ground. Tape side has the point of that toe right in the middle of the foot. As I drill up and down, I'm opening my chest and elongating my spine. And again, I'm using that drilling motion in the hands to make sure that I can kind of stretch and open all the paraspinal muscles, get a little bit more space between the vertebra as I stretch up and down. Slight concavity, grabbing the ground with the toes, belly to the spine, and of course, head neck raise.
from here, stepping with the raised foot, and then stepping again. The arms switch places. As my take side hand comes under my foot, lifting up gently, my other hand pushes away that Ming Men into the back. My head and neck raise slightly. Both legs are straight. If the stretch is uncomfortably too much, you can bring the hands together and gently draw down the foot. Could you show the side view on that? Absolutely. Thanks. So, As I raise up, the weight comes towards the foot that was on its heel. Pulling the weight up, the other leg draws and lifts, opening the shoulders, slight concavity in the chest, drawing the umbilicus to the spine, active raising of the raised leg with that foot parallel to the ground. Stretching out to the fingertips, grabbing the ground with the toes. And continue to hold. Every few breaths, try to raise that knee up a little higher, everyone. And as you do, draw the belly towards the back just a bit so you can use those deeper postural muscles to help you to lift that leg. As we transition, the foot comes over the knee, though not touching it. Same back and chest posture as we continue that round, drawing the hands to holding a pane of glass as they wrap around a post and fighting toad. Again, actively raising that knee, actively raising that head neck. Continue holding. Good, life through those fingertips. As we continue, the raised leg comes across the down leg, creating that figure four. Maintain that belly alignment and hip alignment as I sink. Hold that post. Again, if I need to shake it out any time, it's entirely okay. Breaks are encouraged. It's need to hold. Making sure the elbows are the heaviest of the three joints in the arms. Feel that weight right there, drawing that elbow down as you hold in. And again, shaking it out whenever you need to. From here, bringing that foot behind. As I sink, still maintain that belly alignment. Rotate the palms away and press out as I sink down and push. Grabbing the ground slightly, the foot will help to maintain balance as it brings those muscles in the lower leg more online. Keep holding. He's doing a good job with these. Okay. From 
here. The hands and the foot come up. And just like before, we try to get the shoulders behind the, the, the hips. And then work on elongating those three limbs. Stretching open the back, using the weight of the hands to open the spine further and helping us to raise that leg as we draw back. Again, everything is squared off. I find that initial posture and then slowly stretching into it. As I lift. Very nice. If you're too comfortable, Try using the weight of the arms a little more to open the back further. There you go, actively raising that leg, everyone. Very nice. Drawing back into our base. And lastly, maintaining that even hip as we stretch, fingertips pointing up to the ceiling, toes pointing down to the ground. Pressure from the palms up to the heel. Belly is engaged. Straight line running through the body. And hold. Very nice, Caro. Keep that lift. Keep working on lifting that back leg. I'll grab a post in the back. I'll be right back. So before we get started on this next bit, um, Bagua stepping is a whole thing. There's a lot that goes into it. And what I'm gonna try to do today is give you all just some basic things to play with to help you to build your own comfort with this kind of movement, okay? So if at any point um, I do a thing that just doesn't make sense, please feel free to chime in and ask a question. Sound good? Cool. And we are gonna study today from a Liang Bagua perspective. We'll do a Chung Bagua perspective later on, but I think Liang is a bit easier on the knees and since we all love our knees, that sounds like a good place to go for me, all right? So, I have my center point. My feet are too even around that center point. From here, I'm not worried about the arms, I'm just worrying about the legs. Drawing the belly of the spine, grabbing the ground and raising the head and neck, I'm gonna sink my weight just a little. I'm gonna take my inside leg and lift that big toe off the ground. From here, I'm gonna raise that foot up just a few centimeters off the ground and slide it forward about as far away as the tip of my back foot's big toe. So I'm not taking a big step, just a nice little step forward. From here, Maintaining that belly draw, neck raise, and foot grab, I'm gonna grab the ground with that front foot. From that grab, I'm gonna pull my weight forward into that leg, filling that leg. Nextly, raising the big toe of the back foot. And it's like that back foot stuck in the mud. As I draw that foot up, it's gonna be parallel to the ground, and the foot's gonna pass the front foot right between the ankle bone and the arch of the foot as it slides through just past the big toe of that back foot. It's gonna grab the ground, pull the weight, belly draw is still engaged, big toe of back foot lifts as I release that clamp, pull that foot out of the mud, it touches, steps very little in front, it turns you can see it more easily. I grab the ground, pull the weight, notice my posture is still straight, I'm not leaning into that pull, it's just carrying me plumb into that front leg. Big toe, back foot releases. From the hip, I pull that foot out of the mud parallel to the ground. Foot passes, steps just a wee bit, grabs the ground, pull my weight up. Big toe of the back foot lifts, releasing that foot. Pull the foot out of the mud from the hip, stepping through, grab, pull into that front leg. Lift the big toe of the back foot, Draw the foot up, step, 
grab, pull. Toe lift, draw the feet together. Step, grab, pull. Couple more together. Big toe releases. Foot draws up in parallel. Steps out parallel to the ground. Grab, pull. Big toe releases. Foot draws up in parallel. Steps out, grab, pull, and so on. Keep playing with that for a moment. Good. Stepping from the hip. Everyone's got a nice start with this. So to change directions, with that inside foot forward, come to a good angle. I'm gonna pull the weight up. My feet are to even. I'm gonna take that outside foot and bring it across for a closing step or a kobu, so the foot's turning in at that touch. From here, I pull the weight in, the feet touch. I then take the opposite foot and step out in an opening step or baibu, pull the weight into that foot. Feet are now together in parallel, and away I go. Step, grab, pull, big toe lift, feet together. Step, grab, pull, back big toe lifts. Pulling the feet in parallel together, crossing once again between that ankle bone and the arch of the foot. Step, grab, pull. These little steps can feel kind of frustratingly small in the beginning. Um, this is exactly how we trained in Beijing in those early days out there. It's so important to understand the mechanics of this basic stepping. The big fluid steps will come, but everything needs a base. Grab, pull, big toe lift, pull the foot out of the mud, and step through. Keep going for a moment. Maintain that umbilical draw. Still keeping the hips in a line. Very nice. Let's add in one final challenge this for the last couple of minutes. So now we're gonna give the arms a job. And the arms job is to open and lift. Same angle as the standing exercise we did before, concavity to the chest, rounding to the back. As I step out, Grab the ground, pull, draw the feet together. Step, grab, pull, draw the feet together. Big toe lifts and up. Nice little steps. No hurry to get around the circle. Our focus is that weight transfer. One foot pulls into the next. Life stretching out for those fingertips. Once the posture becomes comfortable, look past the inside hand. If the posture and the stepping is still tricky, it's okay to focus wherever you need to make it into the next step. Now that inside foot forward, pull the weight up, pull the feet together, 
closing kobu step, pull the weight of that foot as a two feet touch, opening baibu step, pull the weight into that foot, draw the two feet together, and now we change direction. step out. This is the foot touches. I grab the ground and pull the weight of that foot. Once I'm into that foot, the big toe of the back foot releases and so on. Keep playing with this for a moment more. As you walk, make sure those three postural elements are still there. We're still drawing the belly to the back. The head and neck is still raising. Also, there's still that knitting of the clavicles and that concavity in the front, giving space to the shoulders to kind of naturally round a little bit. Stretching out through those fingertips, grab and pull the weight, grab and pull the weight. About 30 more seconds of this, everyone's doing awesome. Space our center. Draw down for a moment. And let's talk about stepping for just a second here because there's a lot going on with all that. Um, before I get into my little spiel about the basic intricacies of this, are there any questions? Okay, so. Bagua stepping is the most basic part of the study of Bagua, right? Like all other Bagua elements come are derived from this. And so like all foundational movements, it is effectively bottomless, which means that there's no end to your study of this movement, right? You can always step more smoothly, more powerfully and more gracefully, okay? So if you feel really jolty today and kind of off balance, great. That's exactly what it should feel like on the first day. Um, when I first learned real stepping in Beijing, I was falling all over the damn place. And that lasted for quite a while because it was so different from having taught in America. Stepping isn't easy, um, but it also should never be painful. It should be a process of slowly building a mechanical understanding towards a very fluid and beautiful way of relating to the ground, okay? And so if you do like, you know, five minutes of this every day, you will make the kind of progress you make like if you practice your scales every day at a musical instrument. You know, this is the base from which everything cool in Bagua comes. And it all begins with, how do we lift our leg and take a step forward? And if you think about combat arts, you know, taking a step on an arc is a big part of what fighting comes out of, right? It's how do you maintain your structure, your power, and your coil from foot to foot moving in and out away from an opponent, or in Bagua's case, multiple opponents. If you can carry that power from place to place, effectively, you can be anywhere and strike hard. It's much more effective than being stuck in one static posture but that takes time and work. And I find the first most challenging thing is um, breaking out of the fall model of walking and into the pull model of walking. It's like, if I'm walking down the street, it's an exercise in controlled falls. Each step, I'm falling into the leg in front of me a little bit. If I'm running, same kind of thing. I'm jumping leg to leg. In Bagua, it's like the old Adam West Batmans climbing inside the building. I'm pulling myself up with each foot. There's a clamp, I grab the ground, and it pulls my weight from side to side. Notice how I'm never leaning into my step. My butt's never behind my step. My posture's engaged, and I'm just pulling foot to foot, okay? That's the most basic version of this. And for that to happen, we have to learn how to step with our hips and not with our knees. And what that means is that as I take a step, I'm not bending my knee and bringing the foot through, right? I'm pulling from the quad or hip. As I engage that pull, 
I draw that foot up. See how it's in that parable, like I'm pulling it out of the mud? If your foot's stuck in the mud, you don't use your knee, you use your whole leg. Every step in bog walk uses that whole leg. I draw from that hip, draw that foot up. Once it foot's up and relaxed, it's mobile. I can put it wherever I want. I choose to put it around the circle. From there, I pull into that leg, grabbing with the toes, release the clamp of my toes, that back foot, and again, pull it out of the mud from the hip and continue to step. And if for the next few days you all play with that idea of grab, pull, grab, pull, move from the hips, not from the knees, it'll make the best kind of progress for your early, you know, early time in this art. Does that make sense? Awesome. Now, I know that's a whole lot. Bagua stepping is complicated. It takes a lot of time, even in private one-on-one -on -one lessons, but um, we will get it through to everyone, I promise. Just, you know, if you have questions, please be sure to ask. If there are details you want broken down, you know, more, I'm happy to do just, you know, little like five-minute YouTube videos or on anyone's request. Just, I'll, I will give you all what you need to succeed in this, okay? Are there any questions for tonight? Well, I think you already have so many YouTube videos existing that I haven't looked at that I'm not going to ask you any of those kinds of requests until I've actually reviewed the material you've already offered. But you know, if you um, email me or text me asking me if it's out there, I can point you where it is and I can send That's you the link. 